I remember the last week of August, everybody was like in a panic that somehow everything was going to be terrible and was going to come back in September and what was going to happen. And of course, the opposite has now happened. So, the, the, so now the question is, are people too exuberant? Well, I mean, so the market has been in a sideways holding pattern for 20 months. So 3,000 on the S&P is about the limit. We're there. Um, the market's trading at about a 17 multiple. Earnings growth is slowing. Earnings season is coming up in a few weeks. Uh, and we're getting to that point where the 2020 numbers are going to start getting downgraded. So my short answer is over the short term, I think maybe there is a little bit too much exuberance, although I'm very bullish still over the long term. Right. Um, but I, I see with <clears throat> earnings growth uh, slowing and maybe hopes too high for a trade deal now again, you know, that seems to be a roller coaster going back and forth. Um, there is margin pressure. There is a Fed that is likely going to under deliver next week, I think, uh, given compared to what the market wants. Under deliver because you think the market wants what and what do you think they're going to get? Uh, the market wants four cuts right. over the next year or so. Uh, the yield curve is inverted. The market believes in that. Um, and uh, the market is looking past the strong coincident indicators and is looking for a more aggressive Fed cycle. The Fed seems to be saying that it, it seems to be sticking to its script of a mid-cycle adjustment and nothing more. And so there is a fork in the road there that if the Fed says we're doing 25, but don't get your hopes up for much more, that, uh, and there isn't a trade deal, for instance, um, and we see the earnings downgrades happening that we usually see around this time of the year, then maybe th there is still a ceiling on the market, the same one that we've had for the last right. 20 months. You're more bullish, David. So, I mean, what I would say is we've kind of seen this story before where manufacturing, which is highly cyclical, goes into goes into contraction and the consumer bails us out. And so I, I wouldn't say that I'm more bullish, but I would say that I think that there was an extreme amount of pessimism that was being priced in towards the end of the summer as, frankly, people really digested what a full escalation of trade would mean. I basically, it, it rewrites the playbook on 25 years of globalization, which would result in downward pressure on margins, further earnings downgrades. The way that rates move, you know, people were pricing in a recession tomorrow. That was something that we sur simply didn't see. And so I think this is, you know, kind of classic wall of worry climbing that we're going through here. But I would agree with Urian, you know, consensus is still looking for 10, 11 percent earnings growth next year. And even if there's no change with respect to trade, we're in a trend growth economy and that's just not going to come through. We're more in the mid single digits. Camp. And what do you think the Fed does? So I think the Fed does 25 bips next week. But I would agree. I think they send a message that, you know, look, this is firmly a mid cycle adjustment. We've got the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. We've got core inflation. And I know it's CPI, not PCE, which is what the Fed watches north of 2 percent. They're only going to be able to use inflation as cover for easing policy for so long. They're going to have to address either what's happening with monetary policy outside of the U.S., where we see things continue to ease or address trade as the issues why they're or as the reasons why they're continuing to lower rates. And are you in the urine camp that we're going to have a problem with earnings come, come next couple of weeks? I, I think we will have a problem with earnings. Again, you know, I think that... I think I'm worried about that cascade of headlines, not to be yeah. skeptical or cynical. Well, and it's not only the, the third quarter that will start getting reported in October, but if you look at the, the calendar year progression of estimates going into next year, it's in the fourth quarter of the previous year right. where those numbers start to come down, and they're at 10 and 11 percent, and probably they're going to come down to 5, 7 percent, while margins are also uh, starting to come down. So and, and also there's a limit on the multiple that investors are willing to put on earnings at this juncture, given the broad uncertainty. And so <clears throat> if the number comes down from, you know, 10 percent earnings growth to 3 percent earnings growth, but the market is only willing to pay 17 times, obviously prices subsequently need to adjust. Okay, but let me just ask you, you, you get a China deal and let's say, I don't know, I mean, we've been saying we get a China deal for a long time, <laughs> but let's say we get a China deal. Yep. Just a, let's say a Christmas time, uh, a Christmas time Christmas, China deal, yeah. right? What does that mean? I mean, I think that the big risk there is if you're a business and you've operated in this environment for the past 12 to 18 months, what does a deal really even mean to you? Are you going to ramp back up your investment spending? Are you going to do what you need to do that then stokes activity in the manufacturing sector? I mean, I would argue the answer is no, because you're sitting there saying, well, yeah, we have a deal today, but does that mean that we have a deal tomorrow? And I think that business confidence is, is perhaps damaged, not permanently, but for the foreseeable future, which so likely prevents any sort of cyclical rebound. Remember, margins were at 6% in 09. They're 12% as of last year. 
uh, a lot of this bull market, which I believe is ongoing and will continue to go on uh, for a number of years still, but a lot of that bull market dynamic was driven by rising margins. And a trade war, even if there is a small deal now, uh, really puts some question marks behind that margin story.